time for the Daily Planet Podcast Show. So sit back, relax, and give us a go. Scott and Matt and maybe a guest. Undertaking epic pod quest. We're gonna ramble on about movies and books and television and directors and film festivals and this really long list of stuff that I know nothing about, but they gave it to me and they really wanted me to read through it. And that's all I can really say about it, but it's gonna be great. show hello and welcome to the daily planet podcast your weekly podcast for all things movies tv books and anything else we feel like talking about my name is scott daly and i am your host and i'm joined this week once again by my fellow co-host michael grubb michael it's been a it's been a couple weeks since you've been on the podcast have you uh, have you added anything to your boycott list since we last talked why yes i have scott <laughs> i've added transcendental sci-fi movies wow Wow. <laughs> this is going to be fun. What are we talking about this week? <laughs> uh, well, first, let's introduce our other guest, because joining us once again, making two weeks in a row, is Daniel Freeman. Daniel is, is filling in for his brother, Matt, who could not make it to this episode. He was hoping to see the movie, but was not able to, so he could not make it this week. Daniel, welcome back once again. Thanks for, for jumping in. Yeah, thanks for having me once again. I'm excited for this movie. Yeah, this this week... If you couldn't tell by Michael Snark and or the title of the podcast you're listening to, uh, we're heading into Area X to find out what the hell is going on at this weird lighthouse in Alex Garland's Annihilation. As always, with any of our review episodes, we'll be talking about the movie spoiler free first, and then we will move into a clearly demarcated spoiler zone later in the podcast. So if you have not seen Alex Garland's Annihilation, that's okay. You can at least listen to the first part of the conversation and then pause us. And then go see the movie, because you should do that. But first, gentlemen, it's time for the news. This is Daily Planet News. What? <laughs> first up on the news this week, last week we talked about Black Panther and how it was dominating the box office. And it turns out, guys, that the estimates it's that they gave... Still dominating the box office? Yeah, it is. The estimates that they gave were wrong. They were estimating $192 million over the weekend, which is much, with as much as $235 million over the four-day four holiday weekend. Those were wrong. The actuals for the weekend were $202 million over the three-day and $242 million over the four-day. Um, by the way, that, that $242 million uh, is higher than Justice League made in its entire domestic run. Uh, Black Panther <laughs> made in four four days. Excellent. Um, Take that, uh, DC. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> so, uh, and this week appears to be continuing the trend because this weekend, Black Panther brought in another $108 million, of course, ma making it number one at the box office. It's a 46.5% drop from week to week, which... I guess sounds like a lot, but when you start to compare that to other blockbuster films, you see that it's actually really, really good. Um, the Last Jedi, for example, dropped 67.5% from the first week to the second week. A Avengers Age of Ultron dropped 59%, and Batman vs. Superman dropped 69%. So 46.5%, that's pretty good. That has it, some indications that this movie not only had some great weekends starting out, but is going to have legs and is going to make a lot of of oh, money four of them <laughs> four this <laughs> panthers have four legs that's great michael um <laughs> yeah. michael has of course not seen the movie because of i haven't that, of that it's, on my, to... it's on my uh it's on my boycott list your superhero movie i'm beginning I... i'm beginning to think that your boycott list is just films that just like you're just boycotting <laughs> the art it's of ever film. growing it's ever I, growing i think michael probably wouldn't like it he he wouldn't like it as much as we did. I can that say is, that pretty yeah, confident. That is that is correct. Um, I, Matt secretly told me that he thought it was just okay. I thought it was okay. I, I didn't think it was like the most amazing Marvel movie. Certainly, I don't. I, thought that it was I don't just... think any of us said that on the podcast last yeah. week. I thought we right. we talked more about the things we didn't like than the things we did. To be fair, I didn't listen to it all. I'm boycotting superhero podcasts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man! How do you keep track? Do you have like a word document of boycotts? I don't. It's just, you know, it's easier to keep track of the things I'm not boycotting. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to, to touch on at Black Panther um, before we move on, we had a comment 
on the podcast last week that someone's saying they were hoping we were going to get more into the political ramifications of the film, um, what the film was saying about the black experience in America and around the world and the, the important uh, way it treats women. And I agree that we didn't focus on that very much in the review episode. Um, but I think the reason for that is because we were, I, I was very kind of cautious going into the conversation because we are three white guys and this movie, while I think it worked for me, Matt and, and Daniel is a movie that is much more important for black people and, and for women as well. And I felt like it was our role in this thing to listen rather than to speak about this kind of stuff when, when our perspective is one that people don't need to hear about how the, what the white guys thought about how it treated the uh, African American experience. So um, I'm going to go ahead and link some articles to some critics that wrote a lot about this movie that I really enjoyed reading and, and had perspectives uh, that I could never have. And, and I'm going to link those. So if you want to read more about the political importance of this movie, what this movie means for people in this country, I suggest checking those out. But we did not go into that because I just felt like it wasn't our place. Yeah. And that's all. agree. <laughs> yeah. And that's all. That's all. I just wanted to mention that real quick because I saw that comment and I appreciated the comment and agreed with it. But I just I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to jump into that and be like the white guy talking about how important this movie is for, for black people. Um, so so that's that. Uh, I still really, really enjoyed the movie. And you're right, M Michael, you would you would hate it. Probably. <laughs> All right. The next item of news, Danny Boyle, guys. Danny Boyle, who uh, is known for Train Spotting, Sunshine, 28 Days Later, and uh, several other films, is rumored to be the, one of the top choices to work on the 25th Bond movie, Daniel Craig's last Bond film. Uh, Michael, oh. what do you what do you think about this? Don't care. Don't don't care. <laughs> well, I I mean I just don't think that it's possible to make a good Bond movie. I thought um, they already had it, the last Daniel Craig Bond movie. No, like he's coming back times. for the, the last. Yeah, he's coming just, back for one. Can't more. let it go. Can't let it go. But I mean, Danny Boyle is like a serious director. Um, so I guess it's. I don't know. I guess it's interesting that he wants to take this on. Well, but I. I I, I don't think the Bond character is interesting. I don't think like the formulas for Bond movies are are really interesting. I think the best way to do a Bond movie is like as shallow as possible where you just have like car chases. Um, so I, I don't have a strong opinion on this. This movie isn't for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wanted your opinion on this because Danny Boyle is a very different kind of director. He's He has a very different kind of style. His style does not seem to mesh with Bond very much. And uh, I'm, right. I'm wondering, he's he's a very quiet director. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. I mean, he's very like I would call it kinetic. I mean, his movies have a lot of kind of like nervous energy to them. And it just feels it just feels like it's like it feels the antithesis of like classic James Bond. And maybe that's what they want to do. Maybe that's what they're going for here that they don't want to. I mean, Spectre tried to be like. Uh, a throwback to some earlier bond and it just didn't didn't work at all yeah i mean i i never really understood the um the kind of praise that the daniel craig movies got as being like darker grittier bond movies more realistic bond movies um it it, it seemed like a bit more of the same i mean danny boyle is is a pretty like dirty director maybe that's a good way of saying it like all his movies are kind of grungy yeah. So maybe maybe there's some room for realism here, but I, I don't know if it's possible with Bond character. I mean, I've said before that uh, James Bond is not my favorite film series. I think uh, Casino Royale is my favorite Bond movie, and that's a Daniel Craig one. So um, I I I would love to see more of that kind of a film. But D Daniel, what's your what's your opinion on Bond? I don't think we've ever talked James Bond before. Yeah, I I sort of agree with what you've already said, more or less. Like, I, I don't find... Okay, maybe I should qualify that. When I... <laughs> growing up, I thought GoldenEye was just, like, the best thing ever. And, well, yeah. And watched it repeatedly and played the video game constantly. And it was very formative for my, like, 
youth. But, you know, as as one grows older and can like learn to identify movie tropes, one realizes that the Bond movies are, I guess, also kind of the progenitor, progenitors of progenitors of a lot of movie tropes, but also they just kind of floundered for most of the 90s and 2010s and didn't really do anything new or interesting. Yeah. So the, they're very like like popcorn action movies. And I, I liked that the Daniel Craig movies were trying to maybe subvert some of the tropes, maybe be a little bit prettier. But like kind of like you said, I think Casino Royale was the only one to really nail that beat. Um, yeah. So I'm cautiously optimistic about what Danny Boyle can do with the franchise, although I'm just not terribly interested with the tropes of James Bond anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I th- and it it strikes me that the tw- that the twenty fifth film in this franchise is probably not going to be the one that decides to completely rewrite what James Bond is. Um, if anything, this is going to be like twenty fifth Bond celebration of 25 films and we're going to try to be as classic James Bond as possible, which yeah, is, or, or they could like kill off bond in the first five minutes. And then it's like about the love interest and how she's coping with the horrors <laughs> of the world or something. I would watch that. That'd be great. I would like that better. That's yeah. never going to happen. Um, but yeah, so uh, we'll see with this. I think this is just a rumor. Although John Hodge, um, uh, who has frequently collaborated with Boyle on his, uh, scripts, is is rumored to be writing a screenplay for Bond 25, like just in case they decide to hire Danny Boyle. So we just have a story ready just in case, um, which is interesting. Uh, I, I guess just it's always good to have a backup script. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. All right. The last piece of news for this week, guys, Joss Whedon has left the Batgirl project. Um, I think we talked about this on the show when it was originally announced that the DC extended universe was going to make a Batgirl movie and that Joss Whedon was going to write and direct it. But this week he announced that he's stepping away from the project. And uh, what's most interesting of this to me is kind of how honest Whedon was about it. Um, He said, uh, says here, uh, Babbitt Girl is such an exciting project and Warner DC such collaborative and supporting partners that it took me months to realize I didn't really have a story. I'm grateful to Jeff and Toby and everyone who was so welcoming when I arrived and so understanding when I, uh, is there a sexier word for failed? Um, which is just Joss Whedon being Joss Whedon, but, um, it sounds like he didn't think he had a story. I think there's also rumors that maybe in, in the, the climate we're, the, we're living in now, the idea of, of giving, an import, important female led project to a dude instead of giving it to a, a good female director was something that the studio could not ignore, especially as after allegations against Joss Whedon's by his ex-wife came out earlier this year about him, not, not him like cheating on her the whole time and emotionally manipulating her and all this, this terrible things. Um, but, but yeah, he's off, he's off Batgirl. So, so Daniel, were you excited for Bad Girl? Are you more excited for Bad Girl now? Are you less excited? What's what's your what's your thought on this? I don't even know. Like I I like to see someone say I couldn't make the story work. Um, yeah, and then and then exit a project because it is it's like so hard to actually get a good story to work. Right. Um, but I I feel like maybe this isn't that. Maybe this is a lot of this is like like you're saying some some mixture of kind of the culture of film right now. And, um, and it, they needed to, I mean, I, I agree that I think a female director would be better for something like Batgirl. Um, so I, I have mixed feelings, but it's probably going to be better than, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I have mixed feelings about Joss Whedon anyway. So yeah, mixed. That's, my that's, answer is mixed. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I just, uh, I, I, I did, Batgirl is such a weird character. I don't find her that particularly interesting. So um, it it is always nice to see someone admit that they, I just didn't know what to do, but yeah, it, we, we will never know how much of that is true and, and how much it isn't. But um, Michael, any, any thoughts? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that is it for news this week. And now we are going to move to our main segment of the week. Our review of Annihilation. Your husband's here. Let me see him. He was extremely ill. You have to tell me where he was, what he was doing. It was his decision to go in. It's something they termed the shimmer. 
We've sent in drones and teams of people, but nothing comes back. But something has. You're a biologist. You served in the military. If I knew what happened, I could save his life. The boundary's getting bigger, it's expanding. We're talking cities, states. You need to know what's inside. So do I. So per the IMDb summary for this movie, a biologist signs up for a dangerous secret expedition where the laws of nature don't apply, which IMDb, I mean, <laughs> I feel like you could have done a little bit of a better job there. Uh, I guess yeah. that is that is what happens in the movie. That is of. quite literally like, what happens. Yes. Um, but this is succinct. this is a movie written and directed by Alex Garland, who brought us. 2016's Ex Machina. Um, he also wrote uh, some Danny Boyle movies as well. He wrote 28 Days Later and he wrote Sunshine. So that's a connection to our news. Um, so, the, and it is based off of a book of the same name by Jeff Vandermeer. Um, let's talk about Annihilation, guys, and let's 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 go around the table. This is our non-spoiler section, so let's talk about what generally what we thought about the film. And uh, well, Daniel, we'll let you start first. So I really liked this movie a lot. Um, I didn't read the book uh, before seeing it, but I kind of after after seeing the movie, I looked at online discussions and just kind of spoiled myself because I didn't think I was it, it kind of became clear that the movie's pretty different from the books. And I just wanted to see how like we're and we're probably going to talk about how the themes later. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought it was I thought it was great. I thought it was. I mean, I, Oscar Isaac is amazing and I will watch anything with him in it. Um, and I thought it was visually like creepy and stunning. And I, I liked everything about it. All right, Michael, how about you? Um, I did not like Annihilation, um, Why? which was disappointing because I, well, I, I've always thought I liked science fiction, but recently I haven't liked a lot of it. But but I think I can group Annihilation into a similar type of movie or, or I'm identifying like a sub genre of science fiction, which I think you came up with a good word for. And I mentioned it earlier, which is like transcendental, where there's kind of this atmosphere of like um, either like floaty string music or or like it kind of not not excitement just kind of passivity and all of the characters are a bit dead and um (laughs) and like you're supposed to be amazed at all of the things and like full of wonder at the things you see but that that just failed to land for me with this and also for blade runner which is a movie that i think is similar has a similar feeling um and i think transcendental is a good word because it's like you're supposed to be filled with this like transcendental wonder but you really that only works if you're like the kind of person who thinks you have meaningful experiences from like acid trips <laughs> that's that's my attempt <laughs> to oh describe, i disagree so much <laughs> you know, that's my attempt <laughs> to describe this type of movie yeah, so we're definitely going to dive into that in a lot of detail. <laughs> um, I am more on on Daniel's side of this thing. I really, really loved this movie. I was kind of blown away, and I I did read the book, and I re- we did we Matt and I covered the book for our book club in January, and we were both pretty disappointed. The book is extremely abstract, um, even more so than this this movie, and it it really doesn't want to. It it, it prefers to say nothing. Whereas this is this, this movie is definitely abstract and is definitely complex, but I think it's, it's, it's a little bit more focused than that. It's, it's like annihilation. The book is basically just saying, well, you can never know anything at all ever. And this is much more focused and much more into, to like the interpersonal relationships. And, um, I, I thought Natalie Portman was pretty incredible here. I thought like her act, her performance was so good. Like, the way she holds herself, the way she like she she's a person with military background and Portman like held herself that way. Like she looked like a soldier as she's like pushing forward through this thing. Like she's determined and 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 it is it is a bleak movie. It is a movie that is sad. Yeah, it's really 
interesting that you comment on how good the acting was because I thought exactly the opposite. I was what, like, I wow. Mean, why though? It's, because because all of the characters were so flat. Like they were all. It was basically like five depressed people walk into a forest, and they were all just like, oh, I'm I'm depressed. So, yeah, but that, I mean that's they big... were depressed in completely different ways, though. Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what makes the movie so interesting is that I don't think it's really about the the shimmer or the the weird thing happening in the woods. It's more about how these people are broken and how they're dealing with the different ways in which they're broken. Yeah, yeah. And then is it the, is the message that once bad things happen to you, you're done for? I don't think because, so. Because none know. of them learn anything. So let's 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 hold off on that until we dive into the spoilers. Um, because okay. that that's that conversation is going to lead us down a place that we have to we have to talk about that's literally true. what happens that's in the movie. True. That's, that's true. Um, yeah, but I mean, like, so uh, since the IMDb summary did such a bad job of really setting this up, the whole thing is <laughs> uh, Natalie Portman plays a biologist named Lena. Um, or Lena is it Lena? Lena. Uh, she has a husband played by Oscar Isaac named Kane who goes on an expedition to the shimmer and which is this random weird area, uh, next to a coastline that like has just had this weird shimmery bubble around it. And every time they've sent an expedition into it, it has never returned. And then Oscar Isaac suddenly comes back, but he's acting like a robot and he's acting weird and they can't figure it out. So then he starts dying and, uh, Lena joins a expedition the the newest expedition into the shimmer, uh, which is led by Jennifer Jason Lee, who plays Dr. Ventress, a psychologist. Uh, Gina Rodriguez is a paramedic that goes also named Anya. Tessa Thompson is a physicist and uh, Tuva Novotny is a, a geologist named Cass Shepard. So this is a group of all women heading into this uh, shimmer and the movie follows what hap- the crazy stuff that happens to them while while they're in there. Um, so, I mean, it, it might be worth mentioning that there's also the framing device where you, you know, throughout the whole movie that she's gone in and come back. Yes. And I, I thought that was an interesting choice. Yeah. It, it seems like that was different. If but, I yeah. had to say, I would say that was a bad choice. <laughs> um, it, it definitely spoiled the ending for me because you could totally tell certain things that are spoilers, which I can't talk about yet. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, there's but there's bring up later. There's definitely yeah. a lot of visual flourishes in this movie that are not very subtle that cue you in on some weird stuff that's going on that we'll get into later. But yeah, the 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 framing device felt like it might have been added on a bit later. Um, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't feel like a natural part of the story as it's being told. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I thought I thought all the performances were great. I mean, like. And and for you to call the the characters flat, I'm very surprised because uh, I thought Gina Rodriguez as the paramedic is like the opposite of flat. Like she is, like I thought I thought she was the most character out of any of them. And you um, didn't think I, I Natalie Portman really, was a character? No, no, not at all. Like I couldn't like what it, describe her character w- without using words that like what her profession is and and stuff like that I, I think that spoils things to even say that though <laughs> right <laughs> Just like, kind of it. i mean she's 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 a focused and determined person like she has she is at a, a really screwed up place in her life when she starts off this movie and she sees a way to maybe get some sense of her life through this unexplained phenomenon and she has this unceasing drive that she will not stop going forward no matter what happens. Yeah, I think that's not even a spoiler to say. Like every time there's a weird thing happening in the movie, she just like immediately dives in and like yeah. tries to understand what's right. going on. It's not the standard like horror movie response of like, oh god, the weird thing, get out of here and don't don't even I, look at it. I it's, guess, but but I I wasn't very convinced of her motivation because 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 it wasn't to like solve the thing because she it's like she wanted to get to the end of it, but like there were all of these opportunities where they like got information and there was like even a point where they could like go and like bring the information back and she's like no let's let's forget that let's keep going um there were a lot of like practical things that annoyed me about this movie as well like the the, like the organization of the missions where 
it's like for some reason like they keep sending people in on these really long missions and they and they never like send a messenger back out even though like every day they basically remember like oh 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 crap we just realized we've been here for a long time oh, let's just keep going further in um and so no one ever learns anything about anything the the like physics of the little weird bubble is um like it it doesn't make any sense the explanation <sighs> I- I don't they think there was an explanation. It. So well, I, I, they, I agree that did. you think they tried to, but I, I don't I don't think that was a, an honest attempt at an explanation. I think it was the closest you're going to get to a movie saying, like a physicist being like, well, if I had to guess, maybe it's something like this. But uh, I, I don't think they really are yeah. earnestly tried to explain what was going on. Yeah, I but, agree but with yeah, that. But yeah, I, I mean, and not going too far down the, like, um, practical things happening rabbit hole but but i just didn't buy any of the characters motivations for doing anything they did like it didn't it didn't make sense that they, they all they, they all basically admitted that they'd all given up on life and wanted to die and mm-hmm. and that and, and at that point it's just like well i don't really care what happens to them well, that's i mean that's interesting <laughs> like so, <laughs> <laughs> so right so someone's in I mean, a, someone's in a, a, a low place in their life and therefore they're not worth caring about anymore no no it's it's like they're not convinced like okay you're 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 watching characters in a story and they need to convince you to care about them right like if if someone's like struggling to survive then you feel like an empathy and you're like rooting for them because it's like oh you're trying so hard you can do it but if it's just a bunch of sad characters who have resigned themselves to death and then they die and they're not really that upset about it i then i don't think that's natalie portman's character at least yeah, I, don't, I feel I, confident in saying that. Maybe <laughs> that's <laughs> more spoilers. Yeah. So I but, mean, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just. I mean, but all the other characters are like that. Like, absolutely. So, and 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 the and and the music choice was kind of like, it it was it was kind of playing into the whole like don't care too much about anything you mean haunting uh, and beautiful which is like yeah, how i describe this entire exactly. movie well, what's the wrong worst, with that the worst of <laughs> of emotions <laughs> what i don't i don't know it's just something about it was just like a constant it was a, it was one of the mono feeling movies i i think I, you just didn't was, like the feeling this movie was trying to get you to feel and that's maybe. why you don't like it I think it I, actually very successfully communicated what it set uh, out to communicate. Interesting. I I was I just so bored. Agreed. I was I was like shifting in my seat the whole movie. See, I, I mean, I found this movie like at times uncomfortably horrifying. Like there there were parts in this movie that I was shifting in my seat and it was not out of boredom. It was out of like, I mean, it's not like jump scare horror. It's like you're looking at things and you're seeing things that are just like existentially terrifying. And I, I was completely blown away by them. There's a bear in this movie. That's the scariest damn thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I like the bear. It was just a bear with a weird face. It talks like a human. (laughs) That's weird. Yeah. Well, that happened in the jungle book too. And no one made a big deal. (laughs) Okay. That's a little, it's a little, (laughs) it's a little different. Is it? Yes. Um, yeah, it uh, just didn't work, man. I turned to the, I saw it with two other people and I turned to my friends in the middle and I just was like, I'm bored. What did, bored, what right? did they say? They agreed. We were all bored oh, together. No, it's, it's the Michael aura. Of <laughs> yeah. Anytime you see a movie with Michael, that he just changes your opinion by being near him. Unless, no, if I watch it with Scott, then Scott's enjoying it so much that it like brings me up to a normal level. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Cancels, I, cancels us out. I am glad to be an, a note of positivity in this world. Although if I was watching this one with you, I still would have hated it. Well, you would have seen me with my mouth like slack jawed the entire time because <laughs> it was just like, this is a beautiful movie. Like the things that are constructed in this movie, the, the, the images, the things we see, how it's shot like Garland has proven to be a good writer in the past. And with Ex Machina, we saw how he could be a good director. And I think he just like turned it up to another level here. I I felt like the movie was trying to impress you and the movie like thought it was saying something really important the whole time. But I just felt like it didn't really have anything to say. 
Well, so I think that's I think this movie is confusing. Like I, yes. I, I think it intends to like a lot of the things characters are even saying are not actually, I think, the correct read on the movie, which probably makes this movie like hard to appreciate because yeah. it's so confusing in that way. And that's that's also just I mean, that's just kind of how Alex Garland is like he doesn't he, he tries to communicate things by not dialogue most of the time. And this this movie was was very like trying to tell you what's going on but not really because the characters are not really reliable like actors i don't know i, I I'm, I'm not explaining myself very well but i the point i'm trying to get at I, I think is that like don't don't take things characters are saying at face value no i i completely agree with that and i think that the, the movie this is not a, a movie with a clear answer to it um you are not going to leave this movie saying i know it exactly what this movie was trying to say and i know exactly what each like metaphysical crazy part was was trying to exactly convey to me it is it is it is a difficult movie and i mean that's that's the reason why paramount sold the international rights to netflix they got they were worried about this movie performing well and they got rid of it they called it too intellectual and too complicated um which is which is actually words that make me more excited about things than than less (laughs) but um i i mean me too but but my criticism is just that the movie thought it was really complicated, but I just, I just, I, I can't help but think it doesn't have anything to say. I just, I fund, I, I cannot believe that. That, that is astonishing <laughs> to me that like huh. the movie has nothing to say. Like none of this means anything at all. Right. I just, there's no, <laughs> no. Like it's literally the that's, exact that's opposite of that. It means so many damn things. What does it mean, though? Well, Let's talk about that. We, what we'll, does it mean we'll to you? We'll get into spoilers God to talk about it. that. And we cannot talk about that now. But <laughs> all right, what else can we say without spoiling it? Um, do you have anything else, Daniel? Um, no, no, it's all it's all deep in the spoiler weeds. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and do it then. Let's move into spoilers. And let's talk about um, the last 20 oh, okay, minutes of okay. this movie. Okay, one, there, one pre-spoiler thing. I, I did appreciate how they... Well, I guess it's sort of a spoiler thing. We're, we're, we're moving into... Okay, Yeah, we're, we are officially in we're, the spoilers right now. So go ahead, okay. Daniel. All right. Yeah. I, I appreciated how they kind of Quentin Tarantino'd the revealing of information in this movie. Like, like the, the entire kind of... Uh, Be fair... The affair subplot was sort of yeah. not See, at all I obvious didn't. at first. You didn't? Like I didn't. It? Oh my I, God, I thought, Michael. Well, here's my issue with it is that um, okay, I guess this movie is, if I had to like put it in a comedy or tragedy structure, right, it would be a, it would be a tragedy where the main character um, makes some mistakes and then is punished for them. But all of the mistakes happen before the movie even starts. Like it's not really a part of the narrative. It's just like, by the way, this character has been unfaithful. And and then what and then what is that what does that mean? Like is it's she the trying entire to point, like, it's the reason she goes herself? on the mission. Yeah. yeah so it's... so explain that. Okay. So so the reason she goes on the mission is because she feels bad about cheating on her husband and she wants to like make it up to him. Or something like that. I think that's that the main oh, idea. I think that's overly simplistic. I think she was cheating on him. He knew it. He left to do this thing, and she's trying to figure out why. She's trying to figure out what what is this? What what happened? What happened to him? What? And she's trying to find answers to this relationship, this failed relationship with her husband. But doesn't she know that he? like knew she was cheating on him and I mean, thus I, he was like, well, I'm going to go off on this suicide mission then. Cause I, I mean, I'm, I'm sad now. I think there was the only, I think she knew, but it was, it was basically just that one scene where they're like, they're both sitting on the couch and like just through sheer force of powerful acting, like Oscar yes. Isaac's face communicates that he knows. Yes. And like that's, that is, that is all that she, that's what she's basing that off. Of. And that's like, like, that's why like that you said the acting in the movie isn't good is incredible to me because it's such, yeah, it's subtle. Yeah. It's very quiet. This is a, I mean, this is a quiet. You, you could movie. also have not told him anything about that scene and just been like, act like, um, you don't, you're, you don't really care. <laughs> just, just act like you're not acting. 
I feel like that, you, that would have you don't, sufficed. You don't I, I, to, like, I think you're speak. underselling. I think you're underselling <laughs> how hard it is to convey emotions in a, a, but there's in a performance. no emotion. There's like I think conveyed. he says like hey. That's like the only word in that entire scene, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it, then they just like look at each other and then it it's like a 1 minute scene and then that's okay. that's like what that that is like the scene that 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 she latches onto in the movie. And then it's like but, so so she's but then the psychologist lady tells her like you know why he did it. You bitch. <laughs> right? <laughs> Halfway through. Yeah. And she knows. So like what more is there to understand? I mean, I, so Daniel, let's let's <laughs> let's go through I, I I want us to go through cuz in order to answer that, I think we need to go through what we think the movie is saying and I'm really interested okay. yes. what your Please interpretation of this film me. is. Yeah. Do you want to want to go first? What, yeah, so I I I think this movie is about it's I I mean this is the one way in which it is telling you what it's about, but it is sort of about self-destruction. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like the ways that people do things that destroy their lives and how they deal with that. And I, each, each of the, the characters on the mission have, have either like destroyed their lives or have something horrible happening in their lives. And they've, they've all chosen to go on what they all know to be a suicide mission because of that decision. And I think it each of the characters kind of is a different facet of the self-destructive nature of humanity. Like that's that's what it's that's what it's about. Yeah. And 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 the the shimmer is just I, I, I actually really like the fact that the shimmer is just not really explained. It's just kind of a reflection of it, it's 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 you can imagine oh. the most alien thing you can trying to oh, understand the humans inside it. It's, it's like it's a not prism, annihilation. Daniel. It's, it's like not a prism. It's, and it, it is, and it diffracts. It is, it is like a prism, but it's not annihilation. It, it, I don't think. I, I, I completely disagree <laughs> with the final monologue of what's your face, where she's like, where she's exploding inside the alien lighthouse. Yeah, and I think that's her. That's just that's what she thinks humanity is. Yeah, like, I think I think her. you're absolutely right. That is not supposed to be the central, uh, you know, thesis of the film. Is what she is saying. Um, right. I completely agree with that because I think what happens after that kind of directly disproves that. And I, and I really like this, this final 20 minutes, it's like they, it's 2001 level of like mind fuckery where it's just like these crazy images being thrown at your face. And then this clone that's copying her every movement. And I, and I like the, I like you attach that self-destruction thing you're talking to talking about, and you attach that to the shell of a person that's left when that process is complete and this basically empty, empty shell that uh, Oscar Isaac's character becomes. And then we, we kind of see a version of Natalie Portman's as well. Um, and I just, I find that just so like haunting and beautiful in this yeah. like really disturbing kind of way. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's an argument to be made that once they enter the shimmer, they're, they're just dead. Like yeah. they have, they have been replaced with these copies that are, that are the the shimmer's best approximation of these people and it's it best approximation of trying to understand See, their self-destruction i think and this is and i'm i feel like i'm 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 struggling to capture exactly what my thoughts are in this movie but i think the, one of the reasons that it didn't work or i don't think it worked and that i end up not liking a lot of movies is because there's no like growth there's no change. There's no, there's no arc. Like she starts off as an empty shell of a person and then that's what she is at the end. And, and it's not because of her actions during the movie. If any, like if it's because of her actions before the movie in this case, or in, in the case of some movies, like not because of anything, just because, you know, life is meaningless or, or whatever. But, um, yeah, but, but I, that, I don't think this why, is a nihilist movie. It, it, I felt like it was like what I, I didn't I didn't see what was the meaning what were they what were they showing you was the thing that the good thing that happened out of all of this like all all of the characters died none of them like realized they had a reason to live and then at the end um, it's oh, revealed that so, there's like two aliens who no, are no, no, basically no. So going back to up. destroy back, the world I think all of the characters got exactly what they needed like Death. going going into it no well, okay so let's let's go down the list we have <laughs> we have 
first we have woman who's lost a child and partner. That's pretty much all you know about Tess. Uh, what's her face? The, the biologist. Uh, the geologist. Uh, yeah, geologist, Tuva. Yeah. Tuva. Who's playing? Yeah. Who's playing Shepherd? Yeah. That. So yeah. she just gets brutally murdered by a bear, which I think honestly is what someone in that situation wanted. Like, I, I, I think she wanted <laughs> that. For like, I think this that is the most nihilistic part of this movie is that, that okay. that's what happens to that. So she gets eaten by a bear just Next. as she wanted. Okay. Next, we have Gina Rodriguez's character who goes yeah. a little bit insane because yeah. she's in a really screwed up place in her life. But then why? she kind of, why, why is she the, isn't she the like addict? She's a drug person? addict. Yeah. yeah. But then, she, but that's she, not, they tell you that they don't show you that. Well, what is, I mean, what does that matter? Like she, uh, it, she, cause she never, you never see her struggling with anything, right? She's just there. She's a pretty friendly character. And then it's like, well, it's time for this one to die. I mean, but the, so we'll the shimmer, the shimmer is people. them struggling with their demons. I mean, that's that's kind of what it is. But don't you have to, like, but what about what about the geologist? Like, she wasn't she she just got grabbed by a bear out of nowhere. There was no there was no like meaning of her struggling with demons there. I think her her like she she couldn't recover from it. Like that's. That, that's why I think that's the most. Well, but that was all of them. I mean, all of them, they just come up with some. They don't. I mean, they don't explain it. They don't show it for any of them. They're just like, yeah, this person's a drug addict. That's bad. We all know that's bad. So she's given up on life. Uh, this person lost their kid. That's bad. So she's given up on life. Uh, this person, we don't even say why the physicist. We don't even say why she's given up on life, except that she's we did. given up on life. Uh, they said she tried to kill herself. Yeah. But, I mean, but she... they didn't say why. And then I, she tries, I, and then she kills herself again. I, I again, so, I, I fall back on my. I don't think you want to like this movie. Uh, assessment <laughs> well, because I, I think I'm you just, could take like literally any movie and just like I guess list things I about it like this. I and, don't, and then not like I, it. I I think it. I mean, it's just like there's no arc, right? And and maybe that's too rigid of a rule for a story. But I think it definitely hurts. You have to do something pretty special with a movie to make it work without an arc especially if it's supposed to be about characters. And this movie was definitely supposed to be about characters, right? It was supposed to be very character focused. It's more about them than the thing that's happening. Yeah, but not, Cause, but cause, not cause their... the thing that's happening is boring. Uh, I, I disagree with that. But, disagree. <laughs> I mean, the thing that's happening is they're, they're becoming like the same person. They're transforming. Like the, the tattoo is the big sign of all this, that, that this tattoo is kind of jumping around um, you guys noticed the tattoo, right? The, inf yes. the infinity sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, I don't think a character study becomes bad because the characters don't experience growth during it. I, I mean, like, I, I. They're not they're not explored, though. How, how are they not? They, explored? they tell you thing. They tell you generic, sad things about the character's backstory. And then they die in one scene. I, I think the the ways in which they die are important, though. Like, I agree. Again, the we have you don't like the the bear eating the woman thing. Fine. Then we have going to Gina Rodriguez. She like she goes insane also is eaten because by a bear. because well no, but she like very valiantly saves everyone from the bear almost. Yeah. Before getting kind of destroyed. Um. So she kind of she does kind of die a hero. Like I, I think I think her I I think they're just different sorts of inner struggle that these different characters are grappling with. And like the, the conceit of the movie is that most of them are already dead, but that they're, they're Correct. working through these things in the, in the only way that they can in this crazy world that's refracting everything as, as you like to point out. Hey, I'm not the one who explained it. <laughs> I mean, so is that, is that the, the, when you were talking about the, the practical nature of it, that the, it refracting yeah, yeah, or, DNA. So like a made up sci-fi yeah. conceit, to explain a, th a thematic element of a movie is world breaking for you. Um, well, clearly I had a lot of issues with the character arcs and the story as well, but, but like from a science fiction level, well, I, I wouldn't even call this movie science fiction. This was a fantasy movie, right? This is, um, this is like a fantasy world that isn't meant to have like a science fiction explanation. And it's not really important that it's an alien from space. It could just be like a random, I think that depends on your definition of monster. science fiction, but I, I think it's, I mean, I, I feel pretty safe calling it a fantasy movie, but, um, the only thing science fiction -y about it is that like space. Well, there's, there's soft sci-fi and there's hard sci-fi. No, this is not hard science fiction, but 
I still think it is science fiction, but that's that's not uh, important. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, but the, one of the, the one of the appealing things about science fiction is you take some idea that is vaguely plausible or you know, some extrapolation of some actual scientific idea or technology or something and then you use that as a perturbation to see how characters interact in this world where there's this perturbation and um I I I felt like that wasn't so much what this was. But that's exactly what the shimmer is. It's it's a perturbation to the world that that grabs people and mixes them together. It, it, it wasn't obvious what that it mixes them together. So what do you mean by what what do you mean by that? The, the entire movie was about that. <laughs> like I it it's it's just it's a thing that hits the world and it creates a space and in that space it's you can think of it as an alien if you want. That's a, that's at least one valid interpretation that's just trying to understand the world. Like it, it's, it's the most alien thing. Right. It's the most alien thing I've seen in a movie in a really long time, which is why I appreciated it. And it's like how you can imagine a totally alien thing going about trying to understand its environment, which is just like grabbing parts of it and kind of reflecting them off each other. Yeah. And mixing which... them together. And, and I, I, the movie ends with her talking about how they're not here, the aliens, whatever to destroy. They're here to make something new. And I love the idea of, this movie where these these broken people come together, these broken, arguably already dead in their lives, people come together and they create something new and something different. And life kind of uses them to make something else and to create something else. And that that in in nature or in this alien thing or, or there is there is still purpose behind it. Yeah, there's definitely this undercurrent of like, of of like the circle of life and like how the whole beginning sequence is about how cancer cells are right. are just like growing forever and there's death and life and I, I think it's easy to get lost in in that metaphor but I think that that's definitely there and that I, I I also agree that they're definitely aiming for something like look at all these people dying and becoming something new mm-hmm. which is exactly what happens to Natalie Portman like that yeah. that is her arc that that is the arc of Natalie Portman's character is a doomed person that goes into a suicide mission and then is spit out as something new is reborn almost. Yeah. Yeah. But not reborn into anything meaningful. I mean, just reborn. I, I think into she has an understanding an, of why her husband did what he did. Like I mean, that's, th- that is, that is, the, it's, the peak of it's her. not even her anymore though. Right. But yeah, th- it is her. I mean, what, what is her actually? That's right. If you want to yeah. go all metaphysical, like <laughs> what, what does that matter? The, the, the movie ends with her and her husband reconciling. And they're, yes, they are but, possibly copies but, of her well, and her husband they, reconciling. No, no, it, but, they, they both say that they're not Kane and Lena. Well, yeah, because right? there's something there's explicitly. something different now. They've changed. They have grown. They have changed. They have well, but, morphed. But, but Kane blew himself up with a grenade, and and this was like literally a copy of him. But was that even Kane anymore? I mean, he's talking with a yeah. Texas accent. Like he he is not Kane anymore. That thing was something different. They're. Right. They're oh, oh the thing that blew itself up. I mean, like I mean, they're all something different. Yeah, right? like and, if their minds are are if, if someone's face can get molded onto a bear and then scream like the bear as a human thing, like it, it, the boundaries between people have already right. been broken but, down. But, this, but and that's what whatever, the tattoo but, means. But anyway, they're they're not they're not themselves, obviously. So what is there to understand about her husband when that's not him and she's not her? They're just like two new people. <laughs> but no, it's like the the characters are there, but they're they're mixing with each other. Like it's it's not binary. Like just because now that they're parts of each other are bleeding off of each other, that it doesn't matter anymore. It's like some something was learned here. Yeah, well, and that's I why I say it's not either. nihilistic. I re- that I really really I, firmly believe that. I, I felt like it was. I got a I got a very strong nothing matters feeling from this movie. I mean, like, I feel like if nothing mattered, then then Natalie Portman would just die in the lighthouse fire. And that would yeah, be it. A part, I, I a part of her died in the lighthouse fire. A, a part of of her was lost to to allow this new thing to survive. Um, but, but I mean, she she came back and she's just kind of dead. Right. She was just kind of like emotionlessly answering questions or saying she didn't know. I, I don't think it was emotional. It, it I was think like she had more emotion. She definitely was not just she wasn't the blank slate that Oscar Isaac was. I think she was she was much more emotive than that. 
she she kind of was answering it from a place of knowing what happened and like and having an understanding of of so like i mean so, it's it's the relationship between the people asking her questions and her it's like these people that want to know what this thing is why is it here what what are what do the aliens want cuz like the guy was like super excited when she intimated that it was an alien but she's like no that's not that's not what this thing is you're asking right. the wrong questions about the the shimmer it's so it's just so, a, so yeah. back to the choice of and you're dispersing these scenes throughout the movie of her interview did you guys also realize like more or less right away when she said she didn't know what happened to her friends that she was like also taken over by an alien because um, because I kind of had the impression the whole time that it wasn't her. Like as soon as, um, you know, it's basically the same as her husband when she's asking her husband, like, "What happened to your friends?" I mean, I like, thought it was something know. something happened to her similar to what happened to her husband, but she seemed way more lucid than her husband yeah. did. So I, yeah. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I I will I will cop to the fact that the interview scenes is the the weakest part of a film for me. But I also do think they, they serve a purpose because like Daniel was just saying, we get to see her post shimmer experience and we get to see her more than just that final scene with her husband. So we get to see like what she's like now and she's different. And, and the thing I really want to dive into, we, we see these, these, the, the lines between these people melding and like, there's, there's a tattoo that's appearing on someone else's arm. I want to see, I, I want to watch this movie again and see how they, act differently if they start to take on each other's like traits and body language and, and type of thing because i i think that's probably in there because I, I i i did notice that like when tessa thompson's character like is growing the the weeds all over herself and, and decides to go and die she's she's dressed exactly like gina rodriguez always would dress she's um not wearing the the sleeveless tank when she never would show her sleeves anymore and I, I, there's there's probably other stuff like that where they they are taking on each other's traits and it's yeah. just subtly hidden in the film that I missed the first time around. But that's why I, I like I can't wait to watch this movie again. I was hoping to watch it again before this podcast, but it didn't it didn't work out. But apparently, the house that they stay in with the bear attack is has the same floor plan as her house. Oh my god! See, this yeah. is this is things that I just I I don't I, I like I understand your frustration with the movie, Michael, but I like the fact that w this movie is like breeding this kind of conversation makes me love it. That like the, it's not clear. Like I could go see it again and have a completely different interpretation that I think would not like completely refute what Daniel has said, but could maybe expand on it and explore it further. I think this is a, this is a, a movie that's challenging you. And I think that if you talk about any movie enough, you can, you can you can come up with like disagree this I, kind yeah, of hidden agree. meaning in it. I don't. I, I challenge that. you to do that with Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna watch Justice League. <laughs> well then, but, you, you lose that impasse. Um, but I don't know. I think there's. I, I think you can do that. With no, anything. I mean, like, so uh, he, part of me understands your dislike of it. Part like this is not you. You, I'm trying to phrase this in a way that doesn't sound insulting because I don't mean it insulting. But you like. It's the word's not traditional narrative, but you like a clear narrative structure with clear character arcs, um, beginning, middle, and end, and and a character experiencing yeah. change and growth. Yeah. And th that is not this movie. This is not a, a traditionally structured film. This is not. Um, it's a different kind of story. So I, I like. I, I didn't. I didn't expect you to love this movie, but it's also like. I, I feel like these are the type of movies that don't get made very much anymore and because they don't end up doing very well. And this is the exact kind of film I really want to champion because I think it's just so fascinating and like layered. And I just, I want to see it 20 times and break down every single scene. And I, I sort of disagree that there's not a character arc still. Cause like the thing that emerges as Natalie Portman at the end of the movie is the culmination of like, all of the characters going in to the shimmer like that that is the, the character arc is five people go in See, one I, person comes out i think you're imprinting something that because because i i can't really describe the characters that went in they were all a bit empty i mean they were broken i don't i don't think they were empty <laughs> they, and, and, they were and, all very well and, characterized. and i don't get very much characterization from natalie portman during the interview like she just kind of responds to things 
I wouldn't say that she had developed any sort of personality. I, I agree that the interview scenes are, are weird and were probably added in post to try and make the movie more comprehensible. Yeah, um, that, that's my guess, too. But... I mean, like, I, I think you see it through throughout the course of the movie, though, like moving coming up until the final scene where she has the crazy dance with the copy alien. Oh, which really? Was so it, fascinating. It, she was it. just she was just kind of determinedly going forward the whole time, though. I mean, she never really changed in that regard. I mean, what do you mean? Like. Um, because you're saying that she becomes like a, a, a mixture of all of the characters, right? But she's just kind of. She just kind of stays the same and like, well, we need to get to the lighthouse. We need to get to the lighthouse. Let's get to the lighthouse. Let's get to the lighthouse. Yeah, but she doesn't she doesn't kill herself like all of the other characters do. But she, she like, was never going. she was never in danger of doing that, right? You, so if, you don't if she think was, no, she was like all of them were were extremely self destructive sorts of people and she wouldn't have gone on a suicide mission if she weren't like the no one no one has come out of the shimmer except her husband and he's like completely broken in every visible way mm -hmm. so like you have to like think about the the headspace of someone Wait, so doing so you're that. saying that she wasn't trying to save her husband she just wanted to die no she she wanted to understand why her husband did what he did and was terrified that the answer was just because she was cheating on because him. of her like, yeah 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 oh so she was like in denial about that so she knew that she was looking for another excuse I mean, if, if you want to phrase it that way, she wanted to understand him. Yeah, like, she, she I, wanted I to understand. Like human she they, every, she was searching was so for understanding. Understand. She was searching for meaning. And and the, the, the way that specifically took function in this film is that she wanted to know, she wanted to understand her husband and understand their relationship and understand what went wrong to make him throw his life away, basically. And if it was if it was all her or what 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 was it what is it? Guess I'm just not human enough to understand this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like I can't I can't believe like, the music is so good, especially the the music in the final scene where the like the guitar. Yeah, it, and like it, it's it's in the trailer too, and it's so like I'm gonna buy this damn soundtrack because I found the music so wonderful. And it's it's like exactly the right level of disturbing. Um, I don't I don't know about you guys, but the the plants that looked like humans, like oh, I found yeah. that really uncomfortable to look at for some reason. Like it's just like this. It's so different looking, and I loved it. Yeah, yeah I yep. thought those were cool. Also, the deer things with crazy yeah, plant antlers. Yeah. yeah. And the damn also bear. the. The the terrifying like guy who's split open and looks like a the thing creature. Yeah, yeah, that was that was great. Yes, I'm curious, Daniel. As we wrap this up, I mean, what, like in so in the book, um, to talk about the the difference between the book a little bit. In the book, um, more than just her husband came back. Everyone from his expedition suddenly appeared back at their in front of their own houses, and it's revealed they're all doppelgangers later, and and they basically die of cancer. Um, like moments after they come back they like show up they talk for a bit i think she sleeps with her husband and then the government comes and takes them away and then he dies um and so I, I'm, I'm wondering what what you think his appearance in this movie the reason he showed back up um was in, in the I, world of this film yeah so i i i like the movie better yes because i think he desperately wanted to not be on a suicide mission. I, I think he realized his mistake. Yeah. He, he wanted to make it back to her and he wanted to make it work, whatever, you know, it was. Right. And that's the one thing that the, the, the not Kane before blowing himself up says is, is to, I, I forget the exact line, but he basically tells the clone to find her. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I, I do like that a lot better because in, in the book, it's it's that that is really not clear. I mean, the book also has this giant tower with some crawler monster that it it's very the book is very different <laughs> from this movie. Um, he basically took the general idea of this thing and took his what his interpretation of the meaning of the book was and made a movie about it, which I think is probably the best way to adapt that novel. Yeah, I mean, it, it really this movie is just about these two people made mistakes 
and yeah. they they want they want to change that and and as, I think as I think they a do reflecting prism. And, yeah, and, and I, I think they do. I think I think they both learn in the screwy way that the the shimmer allows when yeah. you you know take people and mush them together, <laughs> and clone with, them with plants and sharks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Anything else we want to say, Michael? Anything else? I think I've said all I can. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, w- one of the things I just wanted to touch on at the end, since someone's probably going to ask us about it. So in the books, it's re- later revealed in the, the second and third book that the main character that Natalie Portman plays is actually uh, of Asian descent. Um, this is something that's not in the first book, because in the first book, there are no names. They're just referred to as the biologist, the psychologist, etc. There's no description of what Natalie Portman's character looks like at all. So there have been some people um, that are upset that they feel that the character was whitewashed because uh, Natalie Portman was cast as an Asian character. Um, I, I I am very sensitive to the idea of whitewashing. I do think it is a problem in a lot of our uh, filmmaking, but I don't think it was here because I think Garland specifically said he wrote the script and the movie had started casting before he knew about the second and third books and what happens in them and what is revealed in those novels. So, um, well, yes, I think you should always try to, to, to keep races, um, the way they are and the thing you're adapting. Um, I don't think this is, uh, that's the case here really. I mean, I don't think race was very important to the characters in this movie, right? Well, no, but I think it's about representation. I think the, the, the upsetting thing for people is that, that, uh, Asian people in general are are not very well represented in film. And here's a book that had an Asian character that you could have cast um, an Asian woman in this role and you did not. Um, and that's understandable. But I, I think in this case, it's just because literally they didn't know at the time. Yeah, I, I don't know if I have I, anything constructive to add, really. Like, <laughs> I, I, it's I, I also think of it being a huge problem, but I think alex garland has a pretty solid uh alibi here and that he only ever read the first book yeah yeah um so <laughs> it's it's not it's not the end of the world yeah this time it was there 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 are other other greater moral perils in the the world of failed representation in movies high ghost in the show <laughs> you, did you like that one i can't remember you wrote a review for us i can't remember if you liked it or not i it wasn't it was it was i never it saw it very good i never no, saw it. it don't don't watch it okay okay well that is it for annihilation it is in theaters now um if you haven't seen it yet why were you listening to this but um go see it i think it's not going to be in theaters very long i i would guess it's one of those smaller movies and if you're international it's coming to netflix so just watch it there i guess although that's the thing daniel like i really feel like this movie needs to be seen in a theater and i'm kind yeah, of bummed agree that a lot of people around the world are just not going to get that opportunity. It's great. Watch it. Don't listen to Michael. (laughs) All right, guys, let's wrap these, this thing up by talking about what we have been watching. What have you been watching? What have I been watching? I asked you first, so you better tell me. In this segment, each week we will take turns highlighting one or two things that we've been watching, reading, playing, doing, whatever. Um, This is for items that we really don't or don't don't want to or don't think we can devote a whole show on, but we still want to bring it to everyone's attention, uh, either positively or negatively. So, Daniel, why don't you go first and tell us what you've been watching? Sure. So I watched all of Altered Carbon, (gasps) I think, a couple weeks ago. You guys mentioned you'd seen, like, two episodes. Why would you do it, Daniel? Why would you (laughs) do uh, it? It it doesn't get any better after the first oh. two episodes. It's, oh, so I mean, yeah. it's you made it seem like, like you were going to be positive, and then no, before we started recording, and you threw me for a loop. Yeah, I mean, it's I it's fun, like fun action, shooty sci-fi, but it's so like there's so many better sci-fi worlds set in kind of the cyber. Like, why don't they just make an honest, good neuromancer TV show, or even like Snow Crash? Weren't they going to do a Snow Crash thing? I think anyway, they still the, are. It was it, it was frustrating, but you know, enjoyable as like watching a popcorn action future thing. Um, also, I, I watched the movie Lady Bird, which was freaking amazing, and I think uh, everyone should watch Lady Bird. Yeah, just, I really love that movie. So so good. I think even Michael would like Lady Bird. 
I suspect I would. I I agree with that. I think a Ladybird is a type of is a is a Michael positive movie. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Michael. Hmm. How about you? Uh, I watched a Japanese original Netflix series called Remind. Um, and by original Netflix, I mean they didn't have anything to do with it, but they bought the rights to distribute it <laughs> in <laughs> the USA. Um, and it's this uh, story. It's like 10 or 11 episodes, and it, and it's a great premise. It's it's live action, but it's got like an anime premise where like um, 12 classmates uh, who are about to graduate high school wake up in this creepy room at like a fancy banquet table and their legs are like are at the bottom of their legs are like inside the floorboards and like padlocked there and there's like a Hemingway book that says um I guess everything reminds you of something and like all of the creepy things in the room are somehow meaningful to the reason that they're all, all there which is like a mystery that's gradually revealed um and it has something to do with like a classmate that they all bullied basically. And, uh, anyway, it was really fun. Um, the acting isn't great, but the premise is really cool and the story is cool and it's told in a cool way. And, and like every, and basically at the end of every episode, one of them like disappears. So it kind of, it's got like a formula to it that works its way up to the end which can never really be as satisfying as you want it to be, but actually wasn't terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, that's, that's, I, I enjoyed it because of its awesome premise that it wasn't ashamed of at all. Cool. That sounds interesting. I might, I might check that out. Yeah. So, describing I'll, I'll something, that. describing something Daniel, as anime. Yeah. Makes Daniel will like it. You won't. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. We'll watch. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I watched a few things this week. I watched first Mute, which is the new film by Duncan Jones. Um, it's supposedly, well, not supposedly, it very, very clearly takes place in the same universe as Moon, Duncan Jones' mo movie with uh, Sam Rockwell that came out in 2009, I think. Um, this follows a mute bartender named Alexander Skarsgård in um berlin of the future i think it's kind of like this neo-noir thing but also like heavily influenced by casablanca um this is duncan jones passion project he's been working on this for a very long time and it's not very good guys and it makes me really sad because i really 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 wanted to like this movie um you can see how personal it is you can see how important this was to duncan jones and it's just like i think it's one of the things where like he's so close to it for so long that he like as he made changes and was tinkering with it it kind of lost its way and it's just something he didn't he, he didn't notice because he was so close to it like the movie just feels very pointless and it, it's like there's there's some really beautiful moments in it i think there's some really good acting in it like paul Rudd is in this movie and you can you can tell he's trying to do everything he can with the material but it's just it's guys it's just a mess it's just a mess and i really like he 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 dedicates the movie to David Bowie at the end of it, his father who who died, and his I think his long term caretaker when he was a, a child also died last year, and he dedicates the movie to both of them, and it's just like I don't want to shit on this movie, but it's just not very good. It makes oh, me no. sad. It makes me so sad. That's terrible. Yeah, it's the small small acts of self destruction, Scott. Yeah. I was going to say while you were describing it, this sounds exactly like Annihilation. <laughs> it, it, is, it is not like Annihilation at all. Well, especially the part where you said it all seemed a bit pointless. <laughs> get, get out. Yeah. Get, just, like, get I'm, out. Done. I'm done ragging out Annihilation. Yeah, ridiculous. Sorry, um, I hate all movies. I, I also went and saw um, Game Night this weekend instead of going to see Annihilation again for some reason. <laughs> um, only because like it was getting really good reviews and that surprised me because i didn't think the trailers looked very good this is the movie with jason bateman and rachel mcadams that are playing like middle class people oh, that yeah. play the trailer. play board yeah. games and then of course they get involved in a a game that's not a game because people are actually dying and the tagline for the movie is least, yeah. this is Whoa. not a game um that's a good tag it 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 was not bad i was i was really surprised like 
it's it's a it's a solid fun rated r action comedy i think it's closer to an action movie than it is a comedy although there are funny parts in it um i think everyone is having a lot of fun in this movie kyle chandler is in this movie and he's having a great time jesse plemons plays uh, uh, the neighbor the creepy neighbor who's a cop in this movie and he is the best part of it he is so weird and wonderful and you can tell it's just like this fully committing to this weirdo cop character then it's just it's is, way it's way more fun of a movie than it has any right to be. Is Jesse Plemons also from Friday Night Lights? He is, yeah. It's a Friday Night Lights reunion. That show produced a lot of yeah. actors. Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan's the other one, yeah. Um, yeah. Kyle Chandler. And, yep. Yeah. Hmm. It's a great yeah. show. It's a great, great show except for season two. Well, well. That Isn't the last terrible. season the worst one? I can't remember. Uh, I don't know if I watched it that far. Season two was real bad, though, because I almost stopped watching it after that, and then someone told me to pick it up again in season two. <laughs> okay. Uh, it also has Sharon Horgan in it, who, um, if you guys have never watched the Amazon show Catastrophe, she is like one of the the lead. She's the the lead star and also one of the creators and writers of that show. Um, She's an Irish woman that just has this wonderful sense of humor. I love the way she thinks, and I love her sense of comedic timing. And it shows in this movie as well. So this this movie, again, should not be good, but it somehow is very, very funny and very interesting. It's, it's better than it has any right to be. And that's Game Night. It's playing right now, but see Annihilation first. And then lastly, I watched a lot of stuff this week, guys. Lastly, I saw a Netflix original series called Everything Sucks. Um, this is a 1990s nostalgia um, teen comedy drama thing, which sounds awful <laughs> when, when I say it out loud. Um, you can tell this is trying to be Freaks and Geeks, but, but the 90s. And that uh -huh. absolutely is what it is trying to do. But I think it really succeeds at that um the first few couple episodes are almost like overbearingly stuffed with 90s references to the point where you start like rolling your eyes but the movie or the the tv series kind of backs off on that as it goes and it ends up being this like really really fun fascinating exploration of of some really interesting characters and uh we were a little too young for this i mean this i think it takes place in 97 and they're freshmen in in high school so it's about four years off for us, but a lot of this is, is stuff that I related to. Um, some of it's a little more uh, forward and progressive than things were in the 90s. There's a couple um, LGBT characters that people are way too cool with uh, that they would not have been that way in 1997, um, but that's okay. I, I think it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's 10 episodes, 30 minutes each, so it's not a huge time commitment. Um, I thought it was a fun show. Give it, give it past the first two episodes because I think it is a little, a little obsessed with '90s references to start out. I also realized that like I'm that old guy that loves '90s music because they kept playing songs from the '90s, and I was like, oh yeah, this one, this is great. What is, what have I become? Oh, my God. Well, at least it's not the '80s. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I mean, they say it's a 30 year cycle, right? So. 90s obsession is just around the corner it'll be next decade we're not already in the 90s obsession i feel like it's supposed to like be a 30 i mean we're definitely yeah. in the, the I, 80s I obsession like hardcore young, right now young people these days like watch friends oh on, yeah on netflix <laughs> not and just, they're like oh what a quaint 90s show <laughs> it's it's not just friends they watch like they watch full house they all in all the yeah. 90s sitcoms uh, God, why my wife they kids, know they house. watch them yeah. all they know we didn't actually watch Full House, right? <laughs> no one told them. They put it on Netflix and they watched them all. It was just because we didn't have on-demand things back then and yeah. we had to watch something. You don't understand, children. We didn't have 7,000 different television shows to watch. On Friday night, there were four. One of them had Talking Puppet Dinosaurs. One of them had Stupid Full House. And then there was The Urkel Show. That's all we had. Oh, God. <laughs> have you seen the... Um... Key and Peel, uh, Urkel sketch. I think so. I, I don't, it's I'm not brilliant. remembering it. I'm probably, God, it's you're really, it's, you're... it's got the uncle guy, um, and he's like, I'm a Shakespearean actor, <laughs> and he's, and he's upset that Urkel is like bringing the show down, and it's just, 
it's oh my god, go watch That's it. Amazing. I don't, ha- I can't, I can't explain how awesome it is without spoiling it so just watch it that's great so Sorry. we'll add that onto michael's what we've been watching is the key yeah keen peel Urkel sketch that's perfect watch that instead of going to see annihilation oh that's <laughs> i didn't it took a turn that i did not like yeah it'll save you time it'll make you happy let's <laughs> <laughs> go do it be uh, happy don't be sad don't watch annihilation <laughs> All right, guys, that's all we had for you this week. If you have any questions or comments or just want to say hello, you can reach out to us via email at dailyplanetfilms at gmail.com or on Twitter at dailyplanetfilms. We do try to respond to just about every message we get, so uh, reach out to us. Michael, it's your it's your line. It's my line. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not already subscribed to this podcast, <laughs> we encourage you to do so and ensure you never miss an episode. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, and pretty much anywhere else podcasts can be found. This is what happens when Matt has to miss an episode. It just all goes, just all goes to shit. What is Stitcher? Uh, I also don't know what it's Stitcher. A, it's, a, it's a podcast hosting platform. It's, I, don't, I don't use it, but it's very easy to just send it to um, scrape iTunes and it pulls from iTunes, so it's easy. So some people listen on Stitcher. And it's fine. Uh, we also have tons of great content here and uh, and more coming each and every day. You can find all of the shows we do and everything else we do at dailyplanetfilms.com. That's D-A-L-Y. Um, if you like what we do and want to support us, you can consider becoming a patron of The Daily Planet. You can pledge a dollar a month or whatever else you can afford to help ensure we keep growing and keep making new stuff. Michael, we hit that uh, we hit that film court goal, so we're, we're, we're going to make that a reality. Very excited. Finally, my flair for thinking movies are overrated will be put towards some end yeah well you have to get past the court first i i mean i don't have to get past the court to make my case that's true that's, <laughs> that's but, not my it's definitely true <laughs> but we have decisive we have decisive action um yeah the, the point is if, if you like you can check out patreon if you want to see more of that and i'll see all the exclu- exclusive content and bonuses we get for our supporters so head on over to patreon.com slash daily planet films also please consider rating and reviewing us on itunes because our self-esteem is entirely reliant on those good reviews well it's not the reviews aren't for us michael they're for other people that maybe want to check out i our know show. i'm making a persuasive argument. <laughs> oh, okay. Which you yes. sabotaged. Guys, I'm I don't know if I can make if it through the week. If you want to be kind, <laughs> then leave us a good review. There you go. Damn I like it. it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I ruined it. I feel bad. Uh, Well, Daniel, thank you so much for coming again. We really appreciate you jumping in. It's always fun to talk to you about movies we agree on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. Love it. Uh, So next week on the podcast, well, uh, we haven't we haven't quite decided what we're doing yet. Uh, March is here, so movies are really starting to come out like crazy every weekend. Um, we have that new Jennifer Lawrence movie next week, Michael Red Sparrow. You wanna you wanna talk about Red Sparrow? Um, I'm not too excited about that one. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like boycotting it or anything. I've but... heard I've heard surprisingly good reviews on it. So um, have you? Yeah. So we might we might review that movie. Um, we might have Matt and I's long awaited YouTube film conversation, or we might tackle another one of our patrons uh, produced choices, which you get when you donate at the Kryptonian level uh, on Patreon. But uh, we're going to be doing one of those things, I'm sure, or something else we haven't even thought of. But tune in next week anyway, because I guarantee I guarantee it's going to be great. So we'll see you all next week. Podcast is over. It's done. We hope you all had some fun. Go back to your work or your school. Maybe the gym. Hey, that's cool. Regardless, just go away. But please come back next Friday.